everyone, Dave here, and today I'm going to show you how to play Robin Ford's outro solo to Rugged Road. I'm going to break this lesson up a little bit. So first of all, for those who just want to learn the solo, I'll get to that first of all. So I'll go through the solo lick by lick, the beyond screen tab. So it should make it fairly quick to get through. Then after that, I'm going to talk about his approach to the solo as far as scales and arpeggios, those sort of things. And then I've come up with a guitar solo based on those ideas, just so that you can see how you can um, apply these ideas for your own solos. So hopefully you'll come away from the lesson, not just knowing how to play his solo, but also have some new ideas, new soloing concepts that you can apply to something new. Okay, let's get cracking. The first four bars are over a D7 chord. Here's the first phrase. Okay, so the first part there is he does a pre-bend, so two frets up from the 10th fret. And then bends up three frets. Then the rest of it's D minor pentatonic. A couple of um, little um, blues bends there, little quarter tone bends there. Okay. Then the next phrase is kind of similar. So again, bending up three frets. And then bend release and then pull off onto A and then push that up just a quarter tone. Like that. And then on the 10th fret on the G string there, give that another little quarter tone bend. And then we're finishing on this little trill. Just quickly hammering and pulling off between 10 and 11 on the G string. Like so. Right, the next four bars are over a B7 chord. So um, you're still carrying on the trill from the previous lick for two beats, and then we get this little. Let's just take that much. So that's just a little slide, pull off. Do that again. Okay, and then we get this little pentatonic rundown. So again, pretty straightforward, hammer pull off, and then change position. Like that. Okay, the next phrase, um, I'm gonna start with that low B that I just played. So quite a long run this. Uh, there's a little ghost note if you want to put it in. I'll do that a couple of times. Um, just as a little technical thing really um, I sometimes hybrid pick some of these things so I was, meaning I include my middle finger for some notes so that note there full fret on the G I'm actually playing that with my middle finger and I find it useful for when I'm going back and forth between two strings I'll go pick on the lower string and then middle finger on the higher string. So in this case, between my middle finger is playing the third string and my pick is playing the fourth. 
even here. And then once I'm at that point in the phrase, I just use the pick after that. Um, I'm not sure exactly if that's what Robin Ford did. I do know that he sometimes uses his fingers when he's playing licks, so, you know, not outside the realms of possibility. Okay, next four bars are over a D7. Uh, a lot of double stops in this bit. Let's just take that much. So the first thing is one where we're, we're keeping one note down on the B string and bending the note on the G string, upper tone, two frets. Then I'm just barring across the seventh fret and slide down to the fifth. Now the first time I do this, I do it with my index finger. Then after that, I'm gonna use fingers three and four just because it sets up the next phrase. So play it again, slide down, then pick, slide into it, slide back down. Then to get the last phrase, you just slide those fingers up to the 12th fret. So if I play the last bit, Couple of double stops there on the first two strings. Then, gonna slide into this tritone double stop. Slide the first time and then play it again. And then just slightly bend the B string sharp. So I'll play the whole thing. So back to the B7 for the next four bars. First phrase. That's quite a bit. Let's uh, break that up a little bit. So the first bar. Let's just take that. So quarter tone bend. A bit of a vibrato there. Uh, again, I don't know if he actually does this, but sometimes if I'm going back and forth, I'll use that middle finger on the B string when I'm doing the... at the end there. Like so. Carrying on. They're on the tab. Okay, then the next bit. Um, again, I'll probably use my middle finger for that. On the G string. So again, I'll use it there as well. So it's with the pick. Um, let's do that again. Like so. Okay, next four bars are over an E7 chord. Let's just take the first two bars. Um, yep, so just a little one fret bend on the 14th fret. Add it down, play 12. Now 
Now, most of the rest of this lick is just basically going back and forth between the first and the third string. So again, I'm going to use a hybrid picking approach. I'm going to use my middle finger for the first string and the pick is going to play everything on the third string. Next two bars, just taking the last beat of the previous one because basically the note sustains and then slides in. General observations there really is trying to let those two strings ring into each other as much as you can. Uh, the other thing is you'll notice that um, I tend to use my second finger to slide between the 12th and 13th fret. Oh, and actually the 14th fret as well. That's it, I'll do that again. I'll play the whole thing actually. Like so. Okay, um, the last four bars are over a D7, and I'm actually going to start from just the end of the bar before actually, because it's like an anticipated lick. So I'll just take that much. So, so the first thing is sliding in this little tritone um, double stop. You can think of it like it's a smaller part of a D7 chord. Just taking the top two notes. Like that. And the rest of it, again, it's all in the tab, but uh, just little pointers. I tend to just bar with the third finger, then the first. Same on the next one. And then just a little half step slide for turning 11. Now this one, probably only really meant to play the D string, but caught two strings at the same time. So don't worry if you don't hit both strings. You're really targeting the D string. ends up hitting both. And then just rolling across with the first finger for the last two. So I'll play that phrase a couple of times. Okay. So again, an interesting double stop this. Again, it's just, it's really spelling out the D chord. Okay, next phrase. So you can see just bouncing between two notes here, sliding to the first one. And then you can see just sliding down with the second finger, pulling off. Like so. Uh, again, you'll notice that I'm um, using the middle finger to play the B string and the pick to play the third string, the G string. Like so. And then the final phrase. So I'm using my third finger to play the first two notes. So I've got the double stop, then roll over to play the D string. And then the rest of it's pretty straightforward. 
So I'll try and put that whole line together. One more time. And that's the end of the solo. So Robin's general approach is he takes it chord by chord. Um, the way the chord sequence goes, it, it kind of does four bars of D7, then another four bars of B7. It repeats those two chords again, and then it goes up to an E7 for four bars, and then a D7 for the final four bars. And so basically it's kind of changing key center each, each time a new chord comes along. And uh, that's just generally an approach that he'll he'll use for a lot of things. So over these seventh chords, they are dominant seventh chords. He will generally use the minor pentatonic. So if I just do the ones over maybe um, the B7, so he'll use B minor pentatonic. That, that's just a very typical thing to do. Um, he will also use um, some triad arpeggios like um, like B and A. It's very common to hear him doing those sort of things over the top. Um, so yeah, the arpeggios. Oh, oh, scale wise. Also, he will sometimes use a little bit of the Mixolydian scale as well, or, or mode, whatever way you want to call it. So, which is basically the major scale with a flattened seventh. It's the easiest way to think of it. Um, so he'll do that. He will fair use of chromatic. So I mean, one of his lines, for example, which is very Mixolydian, is where he goes. Um, That, that run there, that's all B mixolydian. Little chromatic run there, and that's all chromatic. So that's something he does quite a lot. Um, the first part actually, he does this a lot. It starts a lot of runs like this. And there is a little part of a B major triad. So they are Mixolydian. Another thing that he does sometimes also is uh, very interesting. This he'll put a diminished scale over the top of it. Now this is normally used for jazz players use this a lot when they're playing over altered dominant chords, like say a B7 with a sharp nine or a flat nine. But he will stick it over just regular dominant seventh chords, and it it kind of twists the ear a little bit. But it's it's a really nice effect if you want to sound a little bit out there. Yeah. So it's the diminish that's kind of a half whole. So B, then a C, D, E flat, that sort of idea. So um, yeah, he'll do that sometimes. So there's a there's a lick earlier on where he does that that kind of. He's got it there with the, the C natural over the top. So yeah, really nice thing to stick in every now and again. It's it's really something that um, is almost a trademark of his really. I don't see many other guitars doing it. Although um, I think Sean Tubbs does it sometimes, which is uh, another guy well worth checking out. There you go. So that's basically the sort of things that he does as far as music ideas. 
I mean, the other things I really like is that he's got quite a funky sort of phrasing when he's playing over these kind of um, kind of high tempo blues tunes. So um, lots of syncopation, little gaps in the notes as well. It's just kind of yeah, yeah got a really nice kind of. Uh, he's, that's something I always find about Robin's playing in general is that he's very rhythmic in his lead soloing. He doesn't do the kind of typical just blast away, just play everything as fast as he can, regardless of um, what the rhythm is. He tes- tends to play very much in the pocket, in in time, very rhythmic. You know, kind of, yeah, really in there, which kind of sets him apart, I think, from a lot of a lot of players. Certainly, the ones that came before him, anyway. Um, other little things that I've noticed with his playing is, uh, I think he lightly palm mutes a fair bit. So when he's doing, especially like when he's on the bass strings, he's he's obviously resting his hand a little bit, and it it, it results in a little bit of palm muting when he's doing some of these runs. You know the. So uh, that's an, another little kind of sonic thing, if you like, that tends to be a part of what he does. Okay, I think that's all the main points I wanted to go over. So um, I've finished off with just making up a little uh, guitar solo based on those those ideas, basically. So I hope you like it, and uh, I hope you get a lot from this lesson, and I will see you for one at some point in the future. Cheers, guys. Take care.